issues, though, that your team is going to continue to fight over the next 98 days is the media and the handmaidens in the media that are going to continue to pretend that none of this exists and that Kamala Harris is the greatest thing since sliced bread. <laughs> Yesterday, Josh Shapiro attacked Donald Trump. He's the governor of Pennsylvania, might be on the ticket with Kamala for not agreeing to debate Kamala in September on ABC News. Take a look. She is. She's not only ready. She's damn ready. And you know who else knows she's ready? Donald, Donald Trump knows she's ready. And you know, you know how I know this? Because he's afraid to debate her now. Do you see that? And it's not just because she's a skilled debater and a courtroom prosecutor who knows how to make the case. He's afraid to debate her because he can't defend his record. He's afraid to debate her because she knows the truth about how he failed as a president when he had the keys to the White House four years ago. Okay, so two things I'm noticing. One, boy, he's getting a lot of publicity. Uh, I don't think anybody outside of Pennsylvania really knows who Josh Shapiro is. But my question for you is, why doesn't the Trump team make it an effort to work out the debate details with Kamala Harris like today so we can end that conversation right there. Well, I'd be happy to give Governor Shapiro a little history lesson live on your air right now. Three weeks ago, the entire reason we are in this situation to begin with is because of a debate, a debate performance where Donald Trump was so dominant, it resulted in the Democrat nominee for president and current, current sitting U.S. president having to drop out of the race. And despite the glee and the giddiness from the Democrat Party and the liberal mainstream media trying to select rather than elect Kamala Harris, there is not a single ballot or vote that has been cast in her name to become the nominee from her own party. When the Democrat Party, in all of their chaos and disarray, finally selects a nominee less than 100 days out from a general election, President Trump would be happy to debate any time, any place, anywhere. In fact, President Trump would be happy to have the honor of defeating not just one Democrat nominee, but two Democrat nominees yeah, in yeah. the same year. So, Caroline, I get that, um, but Kamala's going to be the nominee. You can't run somebody against nobody, and nobody else has put their hat in the ring. So it's going to be Kamala. So why doesn't Trump just keep his foot on the gas and, and work out the details like today so we can talk about that instead of... The narrative on the left right now is that Trump is chicken. We know that's not the case. We know that's not the truth. But that's the narrative out there because the rest of the media is running with that narrative. Well, that's the narrative because this is a party that's in disarray and decline. President Trump is focused on being back to work for the American people. He's out on the road bringing his winning message to every corner of this country. As I said, you just saw him in Minnesota. You're not going to see her if she is to be the nominee uh, in Alabama anytime soon. But when the Democrats, as I said, work out their chaos and disarray, as we have seen, President Trump is the man who took a bullet for democracy. This is a man who will debate anytime, any place, anywhere. We certainly look forward to it when the Democrat Party can get their act together. No, I, I completely agree with that. Do you expect, you know, I think that the, what we saw put in place for that CNN debate, you know, no audience uh, present, the mics were, were cut off, um, all that ended up working out in Donald Trump's favor. So if he goes on the stage and it's on ABC News, or it's on Newsmax, or it's somewhere else. Uh, look, I think Donald Trump's going to be just fine. But wouldn't you want to put an end to that part of the conversation? And do you expect the Trump team to maybe do that before the Democratic convention three weeks from now in Chicago? What we want to put an end to is the issues that are most important to the American people. We want to put an end to the invasion that's happening at our southern border. We want to put an end to Bidenomics, where Americans can't afford their rent, can't afford their groceries. But like I said, we have to remember, we didn't ask for this situation. In fact, like I said, President Trump's dominant debate performance is what caused the situation we are in now, where the Democrats can't put up a candidate. So, you know, the Democrats always talk about being a threat to democracy, but you look at the way that they're going about this, this is fundamentally undemocratic. And I don't think it should get whitewashed, and I don't think it should get pushed under the table. They can try to do this, election versus election. The liberal mainstream media can try to crown her and, and, and you know, do it by coronation to make her the candidate. But that's really disrespectful to the will of the voters. We are a party with a candidate who respects democracy. Like I said, they can get their act together. Meanwhile, you're going to see President Trump continue to go up in the polls because he does have a winning message on all of the issues most important to the American people, immigration, yeah. inflation, the economy. And we're going to keep working hard um, while they keep losing. <laughs>